Hello, today we will start with the lecture 1 uh, intermolecular forces. So, intermolecular forces the forces between the two molecules. Uh, I have pasted two examples one is the nucleus which is having neutron, proton and electron and they are very well organized through the intermolecular forces. Another example is a bio macromolecules uh, this is a DNA. So, you can see different molecules are organized through various hydrogen bonds and other intermolecular forces. If you remember the DNA is organized as a helical structure. So, this is stabilized by the various intermolecular forces. Also, if you just see the proteins, they have primary structure, secondary structure, tertiary structure and quaternary structure and all the structures are stabilized by different intermolecular forces. So, in this lecture, we will just see what is the origin of this intermolecular forces, what is its historical perspective of this intermolecular forces and also we will see few examples how intermolecular forces are calculated, how, what are their functions. So, let us start with the first. Uh, in the nature, uh, various forces we used to experience and if you understand this code. So, intermolecular forces embrace all forms of matter. So, in any form of matter always the intermolecular forces are involved. So, we can classify four forces. Two are the strong and weak interactions. Second is the electromagnetic and gravitational interaction. The first is strong and weak interactions. So, this acts between the neutron, proton, electron and other elementary particles and these interactions have a very short range of action less than 10 to the power minus 5 nanometer and belong to the domain of nuclear and high energy physics. Other two forces are electromagnetic and gravitational interactions. So, they act between atoms, molecules and also sometime between elementary particles. And these forces are effective over a much larger range of distance. It may vary from a subatomic distance to a infinite distance. So, these are the four different type of forces which embrace all forms of matter and these intermolecular forces ultimately determine the property of a solid, a liquid, a gas, behavior of particles in a solution, different types of chemical reactions and as I told organization of biological structures like DNA, RNA and proteins, carbohydrates. So, ultimately if we see the intermolecular forces are very much responsible in all the aspects. So, these are few illustration of intermolecular forces. The first one is you can see a nuclei where protons and neutrons are there in the nucleus. So, here this protons and neutron they combine the strong nuclear interactions. Also, they are surrounded by the electrons, but electrons can leave the orbit, they can go to other orbit as they are interacted through a weaker interactions or weak interactions. So, this is a very classical example of the strong and weak interaction, the nucleus itself. The interaction between proton and neutron is the strong one and interaction with electron is the weaker interaction. Another example is the gas and liquid. So, in the in case of gas, they are having sort of repulsive energy. So, they live in the gaseous phase, but when they try to attract each other, the cohesive forces strong start working there 
So, the gas contains to the liquid. So, in the liquid they are attracted together, but in the gas at the same time they are experiencing the repulsive forces. Another example this is the earth, we can see a various pictorial representation. We start with the Galileo. So, what Galileo tried? He threw two different balls. When he was throwing two balls, he understood that there is a gravitational force. Also, Archimedes, he saw if you put something in another food, you will experience the buoyancy forces. Classical example of Newton if something falls from the top, so this was the example apple is falling from the tree, apple is falling from the tree, this is the example of again gravitational forces. So, gravitational and intermolecular forces it acts together to determine the maximum possible size of building, mountains, trees and animals or you can see a system. So, these two forces gravitational as well the intermolecular forces they decide about the tides, they decide what should be the height of a particular building, they decide what should be the maximum size of a particular animal, how the satellites work. So, basically if you understand these forces, so they act in all form of matter whatever we see in the nature. So, this is the historical perspective. So, earlier uh, before 1500 or 1600, of course, there were all intermolecular forces, they are also being experienced also, sometimes for the calculation, sometimes for the Ayurveda medicines, but only like now as they were not generalized, they were not well documented, their function were not defined. So, if you just see the typical example of Newton, so it does not mean that before Newton no one experienced the apple is falling from the tree, but that phenomena that observation was not generalized. So, it as uh, 17th century is the first considered the first scientific method where we started with the Galileo, then Boyle's law, then Newton's they derived few breakthrough theory, Boyle's law, he derived the gas law, PV is equal to RT constant. So, here gas law it says interaction between gas molecules are repulsive in nature, but when Newton discovered the law of gravity. So, he always say there is always an attractive interaction between two different molecules. The next comes yours in 18th century because of this contradiction between repulsive and attractive force there have been lot of confusion and contradiction in the 18th century, but of course we got few mathematical theories from the Laplace, Euler and Coulomb's. So, this, this century is basically known as some mathematical methods as well as this Newton's Principia. Followed by this uh, 18th century, in the 19th century we had very good breakthrough starting from Young's, then Classes, Maxwell, Van der Waal, Gibbs, Boltzmann. So, they derived basically the kinetic theory as well as the thermodynamics to understand how this intermolecular forces affect the behavior of a system. This is one example of uh, Van der Waal equation. So, if you just see the gas law and the Van der Waal equation. So, gas law is applicable only for the gases, but in the Van der Waal they have added extra term this is for the attractive term, this is for the repulsive term in the same equation. Now, this equation is called the equation of state. It means it can apply to the both 
gas as well as liquids. Then followed by in the 20th century we had Leonard zone potentials and other law. So here uh, the potential is defined as a function of mass between two as well as the distance between two. And later on if you if you see in the next slide, so we will have both the terms in the same potential it will have both attractive as well as the repulsive terms. So, I will just give one example of attractive forces. So, attractive forces is simple gravitational forces, one object is m, other object having mass m2, their position and their distance r. The simple force between them will be m1 into m2 upon r square into g. So, g is the gravitational constant. So, this is simple attractive force. And now, as I told Boyle's law, it says the gas is repulsive. So, if the gas is repulsive, then how there will be formation of solid and liquid? It means from repulsive again it is going to the attractive force between gas molecule. So, they form liquids again attraction, they go to the solid. But after formation of solids, it does not vanish. It means again it is not attractive forces does not keep continuing. It means that is why the universe or the system exists. So, it is like repulsive, attractive and again repulsive. It is a balance between these two forces. One classical example of this attraction and attractive and repulsive forces is capillary. If you just see capillary, so there are two kind of interaction. One is interaction between liquid liquid interaction between the liquid liquid molecule and second is interaction between the liquid solid interaction. So, this is called cohesion, this is adhesion. So, if you just see put a capillary tube of any wall thickness, you are going to have the same height capillary rise. So, the interaction between liquid liquid it prevent the capillary rise, but at the same time interaction between liquid and solid promote the capillary rise. So, this is classical example where we are seeing both adhesive as well as the cohesive forces. And in the 20th century various intermolecular interactions and bonds were considered their function or expressions were defined starting from this ionic interactions, ionic bond, metallic bond, van der Waals forces hydrophobic interaction, hydrogen bonds and the salvation forces. So, this is a overview of historical perspective of the intermolecular forces. So, the 17th century is known as scientific method or first scientific method, 18th century is known as Newton's principia, 19th century is known as uh, mathematical methods. 20th century is known as this kinetic theory and thermodynamics and 21st century we are continuing the continuum theory and colloidal theory. So, we will just see one example uh, let us say this is your gas law P B is equal to constant. So, if we write P inversely proportional to 1 upon v to the power m, we are giving a random number m here. 1 upon v you can write this is a density and expression for the repulsive forces between two molecules is given by C is a constant, C is a constant and R is distance between the are in the distance or you can say intermolecular distance. So, this is a typical expression for the repulsive forces. Now, let us see one example we are having a cubical space its dimension is L 
and we it is filled with few gas molecules whose radius is r the total volume of the cube or system will be l to the power 3 and volume of each molecule will be proportional to the r so if you want to calculate how many number of molecules are present we can simply divide the volume of these two so these L cube upon R cube number of molecules are present in the system. Now, if you are talking about the pressure, pressure is always applied on the area or one side or one face of the system. So, how many number of molecules are present at each side of, so area of each side will be the L square. So, number of molecules will be L square upon r square. So, repulsive forces between two molecules is defined as C into r to the power n. And if you are having this, this number of molecules, the total force will be this multiplied by this. So, it will be C upon r to the power n into L square upon R square. Now, if I want to calculate the pressure, I have to divide this force divided by the area. And this area is L square. I am considering one side of this cube. So, it is coming like C upon R to the power N plus 2. Now, let us go to the experimental what gas law suggests get gas law suggests V equal to 1 upon V and V can be written in terms of R cube. So, this will be 1 upon R to the power cube. So, if I compare this R to the power n plus 2 and R to the power 3. So, it says n plus 2 is equal to 3. I means n equal to 1. So, for this repulsive nature n is coming to the 1. Further if you want one can generalize this n equal to 3 m plus 2. So, here for the gas law value of m is equal to 1. So, if you put 1 here, so n will be coming again 1. So, this is this proves that there is a repulsive interaction between the gas molecule. We are having this repulsive interaction between the gas molecule. So, next we will start uh, followed by this we started with uh, model interaction potential in the 19th century which says the potential is simple function of mass between two and inversely proportional to the intermolecular distance between two. This is very much known as the gravitational force G gravitational potential G m1 m2 upon r where G is the gravitational constant its value is uh, written here. So, from this the model interaction potential was defined as you have taken G as a constant C G was replaced by C then m1, m2 and we put the r to the power of n, n is another constant. So, this is the potential and typically if you want to calculate the force, you have force is the derivative of the potential. So, f r is simply a derivative of potential. So, if you derive this, you will get n c m 1 m 2 r to the power n plus 1. Now, depending on the value of n, in this equation, if I put n is equal to 1, if I put here n is equal to 1, then f r will be minus c m 1 m 2 on r square. If you go to the 
plus psi this is same gravitational force so what it suggests is depending on the value of n we can decide which type of intermolecular interaction is this like for n is equal to 1 it is a gravitational force so typically gravitational force is always attractive gravitational force is always attractive in nature so typically uh, if you go for and also attractive plus it is also a long range force So, gravitational force is attractive as well as long range force. So, if you go for n is equal to 1, so it goes for the long range forces. So, typically the value of uh, n lies in the range of 4 to 5 for the short range intermolecular forces. So, that we will discuss in the next slide. Now, one can calculate the total interaction energy. Let us say in the system, one molecule is going to interact with the all other molecules in the system. So, total interaction we have to integrate this is the size of one molecule, size of molecule, diameter of the molecule and L is the, the size of system. So, total number of particles will be let us say this is we are talking interaction at R, this is R and this is the dr. So, at this distance we are considering the interactions so, it will be 4 pi r square into dr. How many molecules if you multiply with the number density. So, these number of molecules are interacting this is the potential between 2 molecule wr and we have to integrate from this size sigma to the l. Now, wr potential value if you just remember the last slide you can write w r as minus c upon r to the power n. So, here if you write c upon r to the power n. So, it will turn out to be 4 pi 0 r to the power 2 minus n into dr. So, if you integrate this very simply so you are going to get minus 4 pi 0 n minus 3 sigma to the power n minus 3 1 minus sigma upon l n minus 3. So, again if you just see the total interaction energy is again depends on the value of n. So, if value as uh, value is n of n is greater than 3. So, we can uh, ignore this term. So, it will be simply like 4 pi 0 n minus 3 sigma to the power n minus 3 and this is very much understood that always size of particle will be much much lesser than the, the size of system or you can say here sigma upon l is always less than 1. So, here again depending on the value of n one will be able to understand whether it is a short range interaction or the long range. Typically, if it is 1, it is a long range, if it is 3, it is at the boundary between short and long range and if it is greater than 3, 4 and 5, it goes for the short range intermolecular forces n is equal to 1, n is equal to 3, n is equal to greater than 3, let us say. 4, 5 and so on. So, this is called long range, this is at the boundary and this is the short range. So, typically depending on the n value of n, we, we will be able to define whether it is a long range or it is the at the transition between short and long range or it is the short range intermolecular forces.
so this is very good example if you just see uh, gas losses it it is having the repulsive interaction between the gas molecules now if you can modify the gas law through the intermolecular interactions so it can be applicable for the both gases as well as the liquids because in the gas it says it is a repulsive interaction but at the same time in the liquid it says it is coming through the attractive interaction so considering this uh, van der Waals considered the attractive effect between the molecules and he just modified so he added two terms p he added a term the attractive term at the same time in the b volume he subtracted the terms b so this is a modified gas law proposed by the van der Waal also known as the van der Waal interaction a van der Waal equation of state so equation of state means it can be applied to the both gas and liquids so as i told this a plus v square accounts for the attractive intermolecular forces now if you remember uh, we calculated the potential in the last slide so it says total energy is the 4 pi c rho divided by n minus 3 sigma to the power n minus 3 4 pi c rho divided by n minus 3 sigma to the power n minus 3 so this is the potential uh, energy between the two molecules if you want to consider for one molecule you have to divide by 2 so if you divide by 2 it will be same as the value of a a which is coming here as the attractive force so if you just see the value of a is very much coming from the total interaction energy between the molecules so a is equal to so this will be uh, now it will be the 2 2 pi and of course n minus 3 sigma to the power n minus 3 so it can be further broken so you can write c divided by sigma to the power n into 2 pi sigma to the power 3 it will go upside divided by n minus 3 so it says again it is coming to the same expression of the potential uh, derived here it says potential is a function of c upon r to the power n so this is the potential or you can say this is w0 and this is the molecular volume so the a is coming simply from the intermolecular interactions which you can say is a proportional to the intermolecular potential into molecular volume divided by n minus 3 and simply b is the simple volume function so far half of the or you can say this is v by 2 so v will be 4 upon 3 pi sigma cube divided by 2 so again this will be the 2 by 3 pi sigma cube so this is how these two terms is coming in the van der Waal equation and again this is very interesting example gas law is only considers the repulsive intermolecular forces but the equation of state consider both attractive as well as the repulsive intermolecular forces so term a considers comes for the attractive correction for the attractive forces and b is the correction for the repulsive interactions so as we see in most of the cases uh, we are going to have both 
attractive as well as the repulsive intermolecular forces. So, my in 1903 he proposed very interesting pair potential which accounts for both attractive as well as the repulsive term. So, one term is attractive other term is repulsive in this and this is also known as the my potential and here the constant A and B can be related to the A and B of the Van der Waal forces or Van der Waal equations. Later on this Leonard John modified the value of N and M, so, he proposed the value of 6, N is equal to 6 and M is equal to 12. So, this is for the attractive term and this accounts for the repulsive term. So, this is very uh, uh, very good to see that uh, especially this depending on the value of n or you can say the m, this pair potential can be applied for the different systems. So, uh, we will see in subsequent slides. Okay, so, we will just discuss one example here. Uh, so, this is a typical energy and potential which says this is the attractive term, this is the repulsive term and typical value of A and B let us consider 10 to the power minus 77 and 10 to the power minus 134. So, we will just see uh, how this force or potential vary with the distance. So, with the above value of A and B, can we calculate the what is the minimum value of potential and what will be the maximum adhesion force in the two atoms and whether whatever the force is coming between the two atom, can it be measured experimentally. So, this is a uh, force and energy as a function of intermolecular separation or the intermolecular distance. So, if the distance is high, so before that I will just say the positive is the repulsive, negative is the attractive. So, these are the attractive range, these are the repulsive range. Okay. So, if the distance is very high, a uh, very high means uh, it is a larger distance. So, for the larger distance between two molecules or interatomic, so we are going to have the attractive forces. So, attractive forces is keep on increasing up to the here or you can say attractive potential is increase, increasing up to the here and suddenly if you come very closer, it suddenly goes to the repulsive side. So, here is the transition it goes to the minimum. So, minimum means this is the equilibrium. Equilibrium between the two particles where we are going to have the minimum energy or the minimum potential. So, this is the equilibrium point. If you come even closer to the equilibrium again it will go to the very much to the repulsive side. So, once this function is known for the potential, the similar function we can calculate for the force. Simply F minus dW upon dr. So, the first part was what should be the W minimum. So, for W minimum you know uh, you want to calculate the minima of a function, then W r minus A upon r to the power 6 plus P upon r to the power 12. You want to calculate minima, you have to say d w upon d r equal to 0. So, d w upon d r will be uh, 6 
ए अपॉन आर टू दी पावर सेवन माइनस ट्वेल्व बी अपॉन आर टू दी पावर थर्टीन एंड इफ यू पुट द दिस वैल्यू एज जीरो सो वी कैन सिंपली गेट द वैल्यू ऑफ आर सो आर विल बी इफ यू कंपेयर दिस ट्वेल्व बी अपॉन सिक्स ए ट्वेल्व बी अपॉन सिक्स ए टू द पावर वन अपॉन सिक्स सो यू कैन से टू बी अपॉन ए टू द पावर होल सिक्स एंड सो इट्स वैल्यू इज कमिंग आउट टू पॉइंट थ्री फाइव फाइव नैनोमीटर this is also called the re equilibrium as i told where the minimum force come that is known at the equilibrium point so it is coming point 355 nanometer now once re is known we can calculate w re so here w re in the same function in place of r we have to write the re and we can calculate the value of uh, W minimum and it is coming out to be minus 2.51 into 10 to the power minus 21 joule. But we, it is asked to calculate in terms of KT. So KT is the thermal energy. KT is we say KT as we say KT as thermal energy. And value of K is 1.381 into 10 to the power minus 23 joule per kelvin, and temperature in the problem was given as uh, 298 K. T was given as 298 K. So this energy can be calculated in terms of thermal energy. So it is coming out to be 0.61. kt so this is the first part now if you remember the problem the second part says what should be the maximum adhesion force between the two atoms so again you have to do follow the same exercise as we did for the minima so let's start with the value of f so f is defined as minus dw upon dr so f r will be 6 a upon r to the power 7 minus plus 12 b upon r to the power 13. So again, you have to calculate here d f r upon d r. Or you can simply say you have to calculate d to w upon d r square. That is equal to zero. And if we solve this, so this r value will say the value where we'll have the maximum force so if, if i integrate it further so and put it zero so we'll get r is equal to 26 b upon 7a to the power 1 by 6 26 b upon 7a to the power 1 by 6 and this r is known as the rs rs means separation the force the distance where the separation between two molecules will take place and it is coming out to be 0.3935 nanometer 0.3935 nanometer if you take the ratio of re and rs re means the value where there was the equilibrium means potential was zero rs If the distance where the maximum force is there, the ratio is coming to the 1.24. This is a typical value we always consider. R e upon R s as 1.24. So of f max you can calculate the value of f. What you have to do here in place of R, you have to write the value of R s. So its value is coming out to be uh, 1.89 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton. Or you can see 
you can say 18.9 piconewton. Now this value is coming 0 0.3935. Three nine three five. Just very interesting. At nanometer level, at point three five, it was having the minimum value of energy. But at the same time, we are observing separation at a potential maximum force at point three nine three five. Just see. This is uh, if you just see 0 0.35, 0 0.39, it's not much difference. Also, we'll just see the value, the distance at which we are going to have the zero potential. So, if you want to just say the zero potential means the value of WR should be zero. If you simply put the value of WR should be zero, so the R naught will be here b upon a to the power 1 by 6 it's very simple r naught will be b upon a to the power 1 by 6 and if you calculate this r naught so it's coming to be 1 point r naught this r naught one need to calculate and the ratio of uh, re upon r naught is coming to the 1.12 so we have got two ratio R e upon R naught 1.12 and R s upon R e to 1.24. If you just see this is just a factor of 1 even not a factor of 2. So, here very interesting observation. So, if you just see the Lenarjan potential at this distance potentially 0 at the same time at the factor of 1.12 its value is the minima at the same time at the factor of 1.24 between these two the maximum force is observed. So, if you now we can try to understand that even the separation distance at the some nanometer level point we are playing between 0.3 to 0.4 and we are observing three different phenomena zero potential a minimum potential also at the same time the separation distance so very interesting that's why this intermolecular force is especially that at the interatomic separation even at the angstrong or nanometer level play very important role towards the understanding the system. So, now if you under remember here, so this intermolecular interactions it decides whether your molecules will remain in gas phase or they will be in the liquid phase or they will be in the solid phase. So, now let us uh, summarize here. So, we started with this uh, 17th century known as the first scientific methods where this Boyles, Galileo and Newtons established some generalized understanding or generalized force function and then this 17th century is known as this lot of confusion and contradiction because between difference between the attractive and repulsive nature of the forces. But of course, we had few uh, mathematical expressions Euler, Laplace in this century, then followed by the 18th, uh, we, uh, 19th century, we had kinetic theory of gases, thermodynamic principle. So, here we try to relate how these intermolecular interactions affect and define the physical and chemical properties of a system. So, that we studied in the 19th and 20th century, then again in 20th century we started with the quantum theory and colloidal interactions. So, these are the different intermolecular forces which have emerged with time ionic bonds, metallic bonds, wonder wall forces, 
hydrophobic interactions, hydrogen bonding and solvation forces. So about these forces we will be discussing in the next lecture uh, how they are expressed and uh, what is the function of uh, these forces. So in the recent followed by after the 20th century to understand the very simple systems. So I have listed few examples liquid structures, surface and thin film phenomena, complex fluid, soft matter, self assembly, quantum dots and bio interfaces means how the biological molecules come and interact with the surfaces. So recently also uh, we developed some mathematical methods like uh, Monte Carlo molecular simulations which analyze the things at molecular level. Also we have developed some molecular docking, uh, determination of binding site. So these phenomena again focus specifically to the short range intramolecular forces. But if you go for colloidal system, collides, it talks about again the long range intermolecular forces. So collides out to different uh, protein molecules are suspended or any nanoparticle are suspended in the system. These are the few examples of the colloidal systems. So again apart from those forces we did we come up with some electrical double layer, stern layer. So these are the some recent trends in intermolecular forces or intermolecular interactions which is evolving with the time and very interesting is if uh, first we understand the how intermolecular forces affect the physical and chemical property of the system. Now we are understanding how this intermolecular forces defines the behavior, the property of the simple systems like the liquid structures, surface and thin film formation, complex fluid, bio interfaces, self assembly of molecules. So we will conclude this uh, lecture here and in the next class uh, we will start the classification of various intermolecular forces, their different functions how these intermolecular forces define the behaviors or properties of systems. Thank you.